Good evening. This, the 74th meeting of the, of the 71st term of the Baltimore City Council, is now called to order. Please turn off all cell phones or put them on vibrate. Tonight's invocation will be led by Rabbi Michelle Stern from the Mercy Medical Center. After the invocation, please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. In the Jewish daily prayer book, we recognize Ata Chonen le Adam Daat Umilamed le Enosh Bina, source of life and blessings, you graciously endow the human being with the power to know. You teach a person understanding. May it be your will to grant these leaders the knowledge and wisdom to govern justly. Open their ears and hearts to their constituents' needs, that they may understand them and treat them with compassion. May this knowledge and understanding strengthen these elected officials in their ability to guide Baltimore and its residents towards health, prosperity, and peace. Kane Yehi Ratzon, may this vision of our city and its people truly come to be. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Rabbi, I want to thank you. Oh. Thank you. Atsi. Nice to meet you, too. The clerk will call the roll of the members. President Young, Kraft, Curran, Henry, Spector, Middleton, Mosby, President Young, Kraft, Curran, Henry, Spector, Middleton, Holton, Welsh, Risinger, Stokes, Branch, Clark. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you. It is the custom of the council to journalize the invocation. I ask for a motion to journalize the prayer. Motion by Councilman Henry, second by Councilwoman Spector. All those in favor of journalizing the prayer say aye. aye. All opposed nay. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. In August of 2014, Councilman Cole resigned from the Baltimore City Council. At that time, a, vac a vacancy was created in the 11th Councilmatic District. The Baltimore City Charter demands that a replacement be elected without delay. As required by law, notice have been provided to inform the public of the process and the requirements candidates needed to fulfill in order to be considered. To be eligible, candidates have to be above the age of 18 have lived within the boundaries of the 11th District for at least one year and be a registered voter. The Vacancy Nominating Committee conducted a work session on September the 18th, 2014, and a public hearing on September the 23rd, 2014. At the public hearing, the committee voted to select a candidate who they wanted to nominate for election to fulfill the vacancy. Tonight, the whole City Council must vote on the Vacancy Nominating Committee's nominee. Once that vote takes place, we will recess so that the new council member may be sworn in by the mayor. At this time, I will entertain a motion to change the order of business so that we may elect an individual to fill a vacancy in the 11th District. Um, second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of the motion to change the order of business so that we may elect a new council person to represent the 11th District, say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. The motion passed. We will now change the order of business. Chair recognizes Councilman Stokes. Well, thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the Vacancy Nominating Committee, I would like to officially report to the Council that the Committee nominated Eric Costello to fill the vacancy by a vote of 11 to 2. At this time, I move to elect Eric Costello as the next Councilman from the 11th Council District. Second by Councilman Kern, as is required by the Council Rule 5-11H1. This vote must be taken by roll call. So after the clerk reads your name, please state aye or nay to vote for or against electing Eric Costello to fill the vacancy in the 11th Councilmatic District. President Young? Aye. President Young, aye. Councilman Kraft? Mr. President. Chair recognizes Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, uh, I had the privilege to serve as the vice chairman of the committee. Uh, <clears throat> we met, as you stated, on two occasions. Uh, I'd like to mention some names. Morgan Alkale, Wanda Best, Shane Laporte, 
Janet Allen, Shane Mitchell, Rick Sussman, Michael Ibitz, Adrian Harpool, Andy Freeman, Joseph Palumbo, and Dr. Charles Simmons. These are people who live in the 11th Councilmanic District, community association representatives, business and business association representatives, and at-large representatives who sat and heard the presentations of all the candidates, as did I and Councilman Stokes on September the 23rd. We had a lot of good candidates put themselves before the council on that night. We listened to those candidates. We heard them make their presentations. We read the biographies and the information that was provided to us by the candidates. I saw many of the individuals on this committee, leaders in their neighborhoods, making notes just as I did as these individuals made their presentations. At the end of those presentations, the chairman asked if there was any time for anyone wanted to discuss any of these nominees. There were no discussions. He asked if there was a motion, a motion was placed, two motions were placed, and we voted on that first motion. He asked if there was any discussion. There was no discussion. Mr. President, 11 members of that community, people who work in those community in the 11th district, who have leaderships in that community in the 11th district, who know what's going on and see people in there every single day, voted to recommend Eric Costello to this city council. I have no hesitation whatsoever based on my having sat through that procedure and my having seen the representatives of that district vote that evening to cast my vote yes. Come on, come on. Councilman Kraft, yes. Councilman Scott, absent. Councilman Curran? Aye. Councilman Curran, aye. Councilman Henry? Chair of Gnaz, Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I rise to explain my vote, and quite frankly, because of the kind of person I am, I rise to talk my way through explaining my vote to myself. I've spent a lot of time in the last week and a half uh, thinking about this. Uh, when we had our last vacancy in this council three years ago, three plus years ago, uh, there were many who were unhappy with how the old process worked. And, um, and those of us on the council heard about that from our constituents. Um, and um, nonetheless, the council made the decision it made, and uh, that district returned the council's choice to the council in the coming election. Um, but one of the complaints at that time, probably the largest one, was that there were a bunch of us sitting up here asking questions and making decisions about a district that none of us lived in and that none of us would even necessarily know the right issues to ask about, not being from that district. And so the council put in place a new process, which some of us hoped would um, alleviate that problem by making at least a majority, or in this case, all of the members of the commission doing the vetting, uh, people who were completely in touch with what was supposed to be, what was happening in the district, hopefully those people would ask the right questions and we'd get a, a, a result that was more accurate in terms of um, what the district itself would do if they could be doing the electing in some type of special election. Um, I'll pause to say that I think it's important that we use that term as much as possible tonight, election, because many people seem to be thinking of this as something more like a confirmation, when in fact what this is is an election just with a, by public ballot, rather than the remaining 14 of us walking into a booth and making our choice without anyone getting to see who we're choosing, which is how elections normally go here. Um, so you're getting to see all of us make the decision 
that um, in about a year and a half, two years, uh, the 11th district will actually get a chance to make um, each of them, each of the voters individually, uh, in their in the in the booth. I will say that I was not entirely happy with how the process played out in real life compared to what I was expecting from it on paper. And um, I don't have anyone to blame for that. Uh, it's not like the process did not play out the way it says it will on paper. Um, there were assumptions that some people made, including myself, um, about how things would actually happen that don't appear to have come true. But uh, upon revisiting the actual rule that we enacted, uh, nothing that we were expecting was actually written down. And uh, nothing that happened wasn't in the rule that we were following. Um, that puts me in a position where I am unable to stand up here and say that I cannot support the result of the process based on the process because we followed the rule that is in our book. Um, I certainly have no intention of standing up here and saying that I would be voting against the nominee because of who the nominee is because the whole point of the process we enacted was to take that vetting and put that vetting in the hands of people from the district. And um, no matter how anyone may feel about that individual as an individual, uh, the commission selected them from the candidates who presented themselves. And um, I don't see how anyone in our shoes could at this point contest that. Um, what I will contest is maybe we should stop being the ones who do the electing. And so uh, I, I take this opportunity to say that um, I do think we should figure out a way to have special elections. I think it would be possible to have special elections in a fashion that was not an undue financial burden on the city. And uh, I look forward to the council and the administration and the board of elections working something out in the coming months because the statistical likelihood is we will have to go through this again, if not in the remainder of this term um, at some point. And uh, after seeing how this worked, I don't see how we could fix it in a way that will address all the possible complaints and concerns. And at the end of the day, the only thing that can be incontrovertible, incontrovertible, definitely <laughs> fair, <laughs> um, would be to just put this matter before the voters at the soonest possible opportunity. So, um, Mr. President, I vote aye on the nomination. Thank you. Councilman Henry, yes. Council Inspector. Uh, Mr. President, members of the council, I also would like to explain my vote. This certainly is not an election night or an election process, but it is a process. And it is a rule that we accepted. And unfortunately, I think the process didn't develop a better product for us. It didn't make a lot of people feel that it was democratic or fair or uh, open. But I do think that we are obligated, as my colleague has said, to follow the rule. And hopefully, we noticed, my president and myself, the first meeting that was scheduled, noticed that it needed tweaking or amending or something because we could see that it wasn't going to be an improvement of what had been criticized before on how we filled a vacancy in this council. For the fear that uh, it would look that I was in any way uh, not satisfied, I could have voted tonight for anyone that presented that night. I stayed for that whole hearing. And they were all outstanding, and I think that the district will be served well. I think that what I'm stuck with is I've got to accept the, the rule, that this is the way the committee produced a nominee. It won't change anything if we don't, because it'll go back, the rule's in place. 
it'll go back to the same committee and they'll come back most likely with the same person. So we can't have a district like the 11th District of Baltimore City without a vote in this council. It's not fair to the citizens of the 11th, the city of Baltimore, or the state. It's, it's the economic generator for our area, the cultural, meds and eds. So we need that seat filled and that vote taken. So I vote aye. Thank you. Council Inspector, yes, Council Middleton. Just quickly, I attended the <clears throat> first meeting, the, the, I attended the whole first meeting where the rules and regulations were um, distributed and talked about at the very first meeting. I stayed the whole time. I attended part of the meeting where the interviews took place and had to leave and uh, the process was moving along. So um, with this 11 to two vote, my vote is a yes. Councilman Middleton, yes. Councilman Mosby, absent. Councilman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. I just want to stand and say that, first of all, I want to commend you, Mr. President. You chose all of the members of the nominating committee as 11th district residents, which was not a requirement of the rule. There was a lot of back and forth, emails, all kinds of things that persons expressed their views over the process. The one thing I know is this, is that there are no perfect processes in this life where there are no perfect people. And so we do the best with what we are given. This is the first time that this rule has had the opportunity to be implemented beyond words on paper. Is there room for improvement? Yes. That's what it is. I was glad, uh, and I want to comp commend the chair and the vice chair mm -hmm. for not casting their vote first. first, because it allowed the residents of the 11th district who were appointed to serve on that nominating committee the opportunity to express their choice and their vote for representation for their district. And then the chair and the vice chair cast their votes. So it's a resounding outcome, 11 to 2, that in spite of all the rhetoric that has been shared since this process began, I think that the representatives of the district, let it be known, of all the candidates, that they were all viable candidates, the one that they chose. So to that end, I vote yes and hope that as we go forward, we will all, we will all accept the choices made for representation of the 11th district. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Holton, yes. Councilman Welsh. Yes. Councilman Welch, yes. Councilman Reisinger. Yes. Councilman Reisinger, yes. Councilman Stokes. Councilman Stokes, aye. Councilman Branch. Yes. Councilman Branch, yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Clark, yes. With 12 votes for the nominee, no abstentions, the motion carries and Eric Costello has been elected to serve as councilman from the 11th district. I hereby appoint a council escort to accompany the new councilman to the mayor's office to be sworn in and to sign the test book. That's the book he has to get paid. Uh, Councilman Stokes and Councilwoman Middleton shall serve as the Council Escort Committee. The Council is now in recess and will reconvene immediately following the Councilman elect swearing in. The meeting is temporarily recess. At this time, we will reconvene. The Council Clerk will call the roles of the members. President Young, Kraft, 
Curran, Henry, Specter, Middleton, Holton, Welsh, Reisinger, Costello, Branch, Clark. Mr. President, we have a quorum. Thank you. Tonight's Showcase Baltimore presentation is Richard Dickey Altieri of Local 734 who has come to talk to us about Operation Warm Coat Drive. And I think we all know what that's about. I'm not actually oh. Dickey Altieri, I'm Rick Huffman, but uh, he's about this big. <laughs> um, one thing I want to apologize for happy being on inside, you know, being an old Marine, I uh, know you're not supposed to do that, but I started wearing this Thursday and I'm not taking it off until the birds keep going, so. <laughs> Hey. That's right, we won't stop. Um, you know, we, uh, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Tommy Nosick real quick, but I wanted to put something out here. Um, we started this Coach for Kids the last year, and I know a lot of councilmen were there doing it with us. Um, <clears throat> we, we have very few opportunities throughout the year that firefighters, fire officers, police officers, can work with the council, can work with the mayor's office on a good thing for the citizens. Usually we're beating the hell out of each other on <laughs> pension reform or contracts or something like that. This is like one of the few times we can come together and, and, and really do something for the citizens of Baltimore. Saying that, we met with a bunch of the council people at the luncheon a few weeks ago, and we've only heard from two on how many and uh, I wasn't going to point fingers at you, just relax. <laughs> We've only heard from two, so please, this is a great opportunity. I put uh, Dickie out here, I wanted to do double what we did last year. Last year we did 800, I want to do 1600 this year, that's going to cost us about almost $40,000 that, we're, that, we, that we will raise out of our own union dues, the cops union dues, and the, fu and the funds we do raise. But please, what I'm asking all the council people tonight, before Tommy starts, is get that list to us. We, we can't do a, a whole lot without that list. So please, I know the two that have, thank you. The ones that haven't, please get to us immediately, if not, if not sooner. So, Tom. Let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Tom Nosick, I'm a lieutenant with 25 years in the Baltimore City Fire Department. I'm the Vice President of Local 964. Uh, Rick and the FOP last year did Operation Warm. We came back from Cincinnati this year at the International Association of Firefighters, and we joined up with these guys to do Operation Warm. And it's a really, really neat program. First of all, let me tell you, I work in the greatest city in America. We are the greatest city in America, but do we have a few problems? Yes, we do. We have 43,000 children under the poverty level in the city of Baltimore. Operation Warm is such a neat program. This coat that I'm holding up costs $34. And that'll clothe, it's a brand new coat. Each kid will get a brand new coat. We go to the schools, we get a list from the schools in your districts that children are under the poverty level. It's, very, it's kept very quiet so that we don't embarrass the children. We go, we go fit them and then we try to get it to them before, before Christmas, before, the, before it gets real, real cold out. Here's the neat thing about Operation Warm. We all know what happened in 2008 when the economy did downturn. I see my friend out there, Glenn Middleton from Ask Me. We're all in the labor movement. We want to put people back to work. These coats, made in the USA. Union made in Selma. <laughs> they were made in Selma, Alabama and a plant in Selma, Alabama, which was going to go under. And a guy from Westchester, Pennsylvania said, look, we can clothe kids and we can keep people going back to work. So this is a win-win for everybody. It says made in the USS at USA. It says provided by firefighters, working with the firefighters, but it helps keep a kid warm going to school back and forth. Now here's the, all the neat thing about this. These kids will get to keep this. That's one of the questions last year they said, do I have to give it back? No, this is your coat. We'll, we'll measure them. There's a link. Each coat <coughs> costs 30, $34. Now we're gonna raise, if we raise $34,000, we have a private foundation here in Baltimore that'll match that. Ooh. So we're gonna be able to put uh, 2,000 coats on the street to kids in the, uh, under the poverty level. But we need each council, Mac, 
each councilwoman and councilman to work with us. I'm going to give you the website. You can, if you want to do that, it would be a great Christmas present, too. You go in there, you slide your, your credit card, and you buy a coat for a kid. But we're going to work with some of the schools, like, for example, one near the, our union hall is Hampstead uh, Hills Elementary. Now, we'll go to them. Maybe they have 100 kids that are on their poverty level. We're going to try to get those kids coats. But we need to work with the council to get this done. I'm going to leave the website. Uh, Pre President Young has my business card and my cell and my email. Please uh, work with me. I just saw Glenn back here. Glenn's going to jump on board, and we're going to get a hold of Ernie Greco to help us, so the labor people can work with the council and the mayor to put a warm coat on a kid. And I thank you. Go Orioles. Thank you. Mr. President. Uh, Chair McNaz, Councilwoman Spector. Uh, Mr. President, I know that I was one of the two that he mentioned because I had the pleasure, the sincere pleasure of watching the kids last year. I can tell you that one of the teachers said three of the kids had never had a new coat. They were nine years old. They had never had a new coat. They couldn't believe, and when, and when he mentioned, do I have to give it back, they couldn't believe that they really were, it was a gift to them. So I encourage my colleagues to help them spread the most wonderful feeling I ever saw in a room full of kids last year when we, they came with a fire engine and delivered the coats and the kids, the, the, the kids knew Christmas was coming, even though they were kosher kids. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I need to um, back up. Um, I failed to. Are they on the table? Are they on the desk now, Kara? Okay, Kara will be passing out the council committee structure. Um, we have to um, place Eric Costello on some committees and adding some folk to the committee. So it's there for everybody. Um, so we can quickly get them out. I couldn't put him on the desk prior to him being elected. Uh, thank you all for what you do, and um, we look forward to working with you. Um, if you contact Lester Davis and give Lester Davis the information that we discuss, and we'll make sure we get something from the play campaign to help buy a coat for some kids. Okay? Lester is right there. Okay. All right, we will now proceed with the adoption of the journal. Mr. President, the general of the proceedings from the September 22nd City Council meeting is on the council member's desk. Is there a motion to approve the journal? Motion by Councilman Kern, second by Councilman Kraft. All those in favor of adopting the journal say aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion to the journal is adopted. Bill signed by the mayor can be found on page 2 to 7 of the agenda. Bills will be introduced. City Council Bill 14-444, Zoning Sign Regulations Sponsor or Road Sign, Ordinance for the purpose of exempting from the zoning code sign regulations certain signs posted by or on behalf of the city to acknowledge business entities or other persons sponsoring a street maintenance service program. Sponsor, City Council President, on behalf of the administration. This has been assigned to the Land Use and Transportation Committee. City Council Bill 14-445, Prohibited Open Flame Cooking, Enforcement by Citation, Ordinance for the Purpose of Authorizing the Issuance of Environmental and City Citations to Enforce the Existing Prohibition of the Use of Open Flame Cooking Device Within 10 Feet of a Combustible Construction or Property Line, and general relating to open flame cooking. Sponsor Branch, President Young, Kraft, Middleton, Stokes, Holton, Henry, Welsh, Clark, Reisinger. Uh, please note, any other co-sponsors? Uh, please note that uh, Councilman Costello is a co-sponsor. Chair recognize Councilman Branch. Bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I want to thank uh, one of my community association presidents, Helen Vello, for helping me to uh, see the light of this bill here. Uh, often in the district that I represent, you'll find people barbecuing and cooking out on their front porches, or you'll see them on the sidewalks cooking out on the sidewalks, and which could be a, a real hazardous to uh, anyone with an open fire. Uh, as she helped me do the research, we found out that there is a law in the book prohibiting cookouts on porches or enclosed areas 
especially within 10 feet, but it's not enforceable. So as, I, as we uh, did the travels around the district, or as I heard you say earlier, how you identified many of the residents sitting on porches cooking out, we uh, thought we would put a little um, enforcement power behind this. And uh, I know that there will be amendments. I want to thank my colleagues for joining on to this and maybe during the committee hearing we can address some of the other issues that would benefit many of their districts. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilman. This has been assigned to the Judiciary and Legislative Investigation Committee. City Council Bill 14-446, City Property, naming a portion of the Stony Run Walking Path to be the Adam D. Cocky Jr. Walking Path in Stony Run Park. Ordinance for the purpose of naming a portion of the Stony Run Walk Path located in the Stony Run Park to be the Adam D. Cocky Jr. Walking Path in Stony Run Park. Sponsored Middleton and Branch. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Middleton. Thank you, Mr. President. This naming is at the request of the Winehurst Community Association, Is which in is, um, lies in the <coughs> area of the um, Greater Roland Park. Um, in a park for a few years now, there has been a partnership with the Roland Park Civic League, the Friends of Stony Run, the Department of Recreation and Parks, the Winehurst Community Association and the State Department of National Resources. And they received a grant for, as we all know, to um, help in the revitalization of uh, the stream and Stony Run. And uh, through all of that, they decided to um, ask and to get the, a portion of that uh, pathway renamed as the um, Adam D. Cocky Jr. Um, Stony Run walking path. And just a little history of, about Adam Cocky. He, uh, he was a, had a 40 year career in Baltimore in the real estate industry. And he began his career in marketing homes in uh, the North Baltimore neighborhoods, such as Roland Park and the Orchards. Uh, he received several the awards, the 1996 Maryland State Realtor of the Year. He was the 1996 Greater Baltimore <coughs> Realtor of the Year. He also, in 2008, was, uh, received the Maryland Association of Realtors, gave him a Life Achievement, Achievement Award, and they continue to name that award <coughs> after him. Um, he also was the past president of the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation where he uh, led the foundation's first mi million dollar fundraising campaign. Uh, he definitely showed throughout his life how he cared about people and the causes and he was respected <coughs> statewide and nationally. Um, so it's, it's an honor to um, have this particular portion of the path named after him. He also was the owner of the Winehurst station and he um, knew that there had to be basically an opening through for that walking path, and he donated a portion of that property to uh, the Department of Recreation and Parks. And he passed away, um, I think it was in 2011, uh, while on vacation, uh, just a um, terrible accident. But he wanted to, um, it, you know, the process didn't go through. So on behalf of the family, they wanted to follow through with his dreams and wishes of, um, you know, giving that, uh, finishing the process and giving that portion <coughs> of that path to the city. So the community thinks it would be just wonderful to uh, rename that portion of the path after him. So um, I thank um, the, um, chair of the Judiciary Committee for um, moving this through quickly because it has been a, a couple year process. So thank you so much. Uh, this has been assigned to the Judiciary and Legislative Investigation Committee. Resolution to be introduced. City Council <coughs> Resolution 14-191R, vote yes for question one, State Transportation Fund Lockbox. Resolution for the purpose of supporting the proposed constitutional amendment to protect transportation funds from use of other projects and urging a yes vote on question number one. 
Sponsor Specter, President Young, Kraft, Middleton, Stokes, Colton, Branch, Henry, Wells, and Reisinger. Please note that Councilman Kern is a, a yes vote and will co-sponsor. Chair recognize. Uh, I invite our new colleague also. Okay. <laughs> um, you, please note that uh, Councilman Costello um, is a co-sponsor as well. Chair recognize Councilwoman Specter. Oh, and Councilwoman Clark. Okay. Th thank you, Mr. President, members of the council. I rise because I think that we need to remind our audiences and our constituents that in addition on November 4th when we go to vote for elected offices for state and federal people, we have a very important responsibility for the, to know what questions are on the ballot as well. And question one is so important, it is a, an amendment to the Constitution that would prevent the legislators from raiding the Transportation tr Trust Fund. Over these bad lean years, and we expect to hear more, they're able to transfer funds out at this time. Uh, fortunately, when they did raid, they did put them back. But also at the same time, when they raided, it shorted since 2009, Baltimore City, has been has reduced 100 million dollars a year at a highway user revenue because they're able to rate it. It was never put back. We know the condition of our streets, our, the cave-ins, the, the the sinkholes, the fact that we don't have money. Not forget the potholes. It just is impossible for us to continue, and we have to do something to send a message that when these monies are generated, these revenues are generated for the transportation issues of the cities and the counties, they should absolutely keep them dedicated. So I urge you please to and, uh, encourage your constituents to vote for question one. It will go a long way. And while you're there, of course, we need the investment in Baltimore City. The bond issue is on the ballot when you finish voting for the people that you want. Vote for questions A through G. It's the way to invest, invest in our city, and it doesn't come out of our tax pocket. Thank, Thank you. you. Does any of that include the uh, council attorney? It especially <laughs> includes the county. Thank attorney. you. <laughs> um, you want to move to suspend the rules, Councilwoman? Uh, please, um, I'd like to move to suspend the rules for immediate adoption. Second by Councilwoman um, Holton. All those in favor of suspending the rules for media adoption of this resolution say aye. Thank you. Those opposed nay. The motion carried the rules are suspended. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Inspector. Mr. President, you offered uh, in your goodwill this afternoon to maybe present a press conference or something where we take the time to educate the people so how important it is on November 4th, what, how important that is to the citizens of Baltimore. I, I am amazed when I see 5% of the vote comes out, 6%. It is impossible for me to understand how anybody could want to not not make it their obligation to vote on election day. So Thank you want to you want to move the resolution favorable? You can move the motion. You can Sec move the motion Second by favorable. Councilwoman Holton. All those in favor of adopting resolution 14-0191R say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion carried. This resolution is adopted. And um, Madam um, Councilwoman Specter. Uh, we, where's Kara? Kara's going to reach out Do with Andy Smullyan, and we're going to try to work around the mayor's schedule so that we can have a big thing with the mayor Very and good. all the council people talk about how important it is for the citizens of Baltimore to come out and vote. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, go ahead. City Council Resolution 14-192R, Investigative Hearing, Charm <coughs> City Circulator. Resolution for the purpose of calling on representatives from the Department of Finance and Transportation to appear before the council to report the cost and ridership numbers for the Charm City Circulator, as well as whether or not revenue sources originally intended to pay for the circulator operations have proven to be sufficient, and to discuss the contents of the R RFP to operate the circulator in future years, including the possibility of requiring a $1 fare for each circulator ride. Sponsor President Young, Branch, Clark, Reisinger, Henry, Holton, Welsh, Stokes, Kraft, and Middleton. Please note Councilman Kern is a co-sponsor. Um, this has been assigned to the Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee. I spoke about that at length at the council lunch. Uh, you can find the council, I mean, you can find the consent calendar in section eight at the back of the agenda is there a motion to approve the consent calendar. Moved by Councilman Kern, second by Councilman Welch. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. 
The motion carries and this calendar is approved. We'll now move the bills on second reader, Executive Appointments Committee. EA 14-252, Relief Kays, Member Youth Commission, 9th District. I recognize Councilman Welch. Ms. Owen. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee held a hearing on Wednesday, September 24th, and I move that nomination favorable. Uh, second by Councilwoman Spector. All those in favor of confirming this nominee, say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. This nomination is confirmed. EA 14-253, Kelsey Johnson, Member Youth Commission, 8th District. I move the nomination favorable. You want to come off? Okay. Um, can we back up for one minute? Um, please note that Councilwoman uh, Clark um, needs to come off of the Charm City Circulator. Okay, so strike her name from there. All right. Okay, I understand. <laughs> Um, Chair, recognize Councilman Welch. Yeah, I move that nomination favorable, Mr. Uh, President. Second by Councilwoman Holton. All those in favor of confirming this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. This nomination is confirmed. EA 14 254, Malik Brooks, Member Youth Commission, 2nd District. Chair, um, recognize Councilman Welch. I move the nomination favorable. Uh, second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of confirming this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. This nomination is confirmed. EA 14 255, Felicia Harris, Member Youth Commission, 14th District. I recognize uh, Councilman Welch. I move the nomination favorable. Okay, second by Councilwoman Clark. All those in favor of confirming this nominee say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. This nomination is confirmed. Thank the Judiciary you, Mr. and Legislative Investigation Committee. City Council Bill 14 415, the Solid Waste Management Plan for Baltimore City, Mayor and City Council Resolution for the purpose of adopting a new Solid Waste Management Plan for Baltimore City, providing a special effective date and generally relating to solid waste disposal systems, solid waste acceptance facilities, and the systematic collection and disposal of solid waste. Chair, recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we heard this bill on both uh, September 16th and on September 23rd. Um, had a good presentation, had all the questions answered. There are no amendments to the resolution bill. I would move it favorably at this time. Second by Councilman Kern. All those in favor of approving this bill say aye. aye. Those opposed nay. The motion is to approve this bill, moves to third reader. Third reader for final passage. City Council Bill 14-412, rezoning 511 South Caroline Street for the purpose of changing the zoning for the property known as 511 South Caroline Street as outlined in red on the accompanying plat from the R8 Zoning District to the B12 Zoning District. President Young, Kraft, Curran, Henry, Middleton, Holton, Welsh, Reisinger, Costello, Branch, Clark. This bill is approved. Um, you abstain. Please note that Councilwoman Clark abstains. Uh, committee announcements. I saw you on that side last time. Chair recognize uh, Council Vice President Reisinger. Mr. President, the uh, Land Use and Transportation Committee will hold a hearing on Bill 14-0379 on Wednesday, October 22nd at 3 p.m. in the Council Chambers. This is a uh, plan unit development designated at Remington Row. Uh, Mr. President, I need to uh, move for suspension of rules 10-2. Second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor say aye. <laughs> All those opposed nay. The most encouraged chair recognize Councilman uh, <laughs> Vice President Brian Singer. Uh, the Land Use and Transportation Committee will hold a hearing with Bill 14-0428 on Thursday, November 12th at 1 p.m. in the Council Chambers. This is a rezoning for a portion of 2051 South Hanover Street. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Committee announcement. Chair recognize Councilman Branch. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Public Safety Committee will conduct an informational hearing on the following topics. The anatomy of an arrest and the anatomy of a car stop and tow. The hearing will take place on Tuesday, October 21st, 2014 at 4 p.m. in the Clarence DuBurns Chamber. A large number of Baltimore citizens have witnessed and maybe experienced the ordeal of being arrested as well as having their vehicle stopped and subsequently towed at the request of a police officer. This hearing will answer a number of questions and concerns surrounding these issues and hopefully shine light on what rights the citizens have when being arrested and what protocols the police officers must follow when making an arrest. In addition, the citizens should know exactly why their vehicle has been stopped and why the vehicle is subsequently being towed. In short, the citizens should know the do's and don'ts in their situations. 
The Baltimore, I mean, Baltimore Police Commissioner Anthony Batts has been invited to attend and address these issues and offer his experience and expertise on these, import, on these important and other frustrating matters. Other prominent members from the community will be invited to attend and provide insight on these issues as well as the general public in encouraging to attend and provide their input and expertise. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Chair. Recognize Councilwoman Clark. Uh, Mr. President, members of the City Council, the Education and Youth Committee of the City Council will meet on Thursday, October 9th. That's this coming Thursday. Um, this is a legislative oversight. Uh, the Fund for Educational Excellence's citywide listening campaign has concluded and they would like to report their findings with the committee and this hearing is scheduled for four o'clock Thursday. Hope that you can come. We'll be, it'll be an interesting um, listening for, uh, for us as well. Um, Thursday, October 23rd, Education and Youth, um, this will be City Council Resolution 14169R. This is Councilman Scott's resolution in which he is calling upon to give youth a voice in community decisions. Yes, I have a very excellent representative from the 14th on the Youth Commission. For the purpose of calling on all neighborhood community associations, to make a greater effort to involve young people in their discussions by including at least one youth representative on their executive boards. So please come, and I hope our neighborhood associations will be represented. It's a great idea. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any more committee announcements? Chair recognized Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. I was, I was going to say that I'm actually making this announcement on behalf of Councilman Stokes, so it should count as an announcement from that side okay. instead right. of an announcement <laughs> from this side. <laughs> the Taxation, <laughs> Finance, and Economic Development Committee will hear, oh, I'm sorry, I need to move for suspension of rules 10-2 uh, to announce a hearing for City Council Bill 14-0429. Second, second by Councilman Kern, all of the favor suspended rules announce a hearing, say aye. Aye. Opposed, opposed, nay. The most current chair recognizes Councilman Henry. Thank you, Mr. President. The Taxation, Finance, and Economic Development Committee will hear City Council Bill 14-0429, sale of property, former bed of Will Street, on Thursday, October 16th, 2014, at 10 a.m. here in the Council Chambers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, committee announcements. Chair recognize Council McCurrent. Thank you, Mr. President. The Health Committee of the Bomber City Council will meet October 21st, 2014 at 105 in Dubern Chambers of Hill City Council Ordinance 14-0432, which is a ordinance concerning food service facilities mirroring state laws for the purpose of re refining, redefining food service facilities to mirror state law, providing accordance with state law, and for a certain licensing exemptions. I know our churches like to have this moved as quickly as possible, and we'll do that on October 21st uh, at 1.05 p.m. City Council Bill 14-0432. Um, Chair, recognize Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move to suspend the appropriate rules to announce the hearing. Second by Councilman Costello. All those in favor of suspending the rules, change the, all those in favor of changing the rules to announce the hearing, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. The motion carried. Chair recognizes Councilman Kraft. Thank you, Mr. President. The Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee will hear Bill Number 140446, City Property, naming a portion of the Stony Run walking path to be the Adam D. Cocky Jr. walking path in Stony Run Park on Tuesday, October 14, 2014 at 9.15 a.m. here in the Council Chambers. The Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee will hear Council Bill 140417, the 2014 Corrective Bill, on Tuesday, October 14, 2014 at 9.30 a.m. here in the Council Chambers and the Judiciary and Legislative Investigations Committee will continue its work session and voting session on Council Bill 140413, 
This will be the fifth and we believe final um, work session and voting session on the International Green Construction Code and that will be on Tuesday, October 14th at 10 a.m. here in the council chambers. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, committee announcements, regular announcements. First of all, I wanna, I, I pulled out my hat. Been an oil fan since um, 1960, since 1964. I was um, a junior oil. You paid a dollar 99 cents. You got 14 uh, games. You got a hot dog, soda, and popcorn. So I go way back with the Oyos. So I want to wish um, the Oyos great success as they move forward. Um, you know, uh, they say Buck Show Walter. This is his first time winning it. Um, you know, he's always been at the door, but never was able to win that American League East. He did it. Now we're going to take on Kansas City. We're going to sweep them in four. And then we're going to go on to the World Series, and we're going to win the World Series. So I want to congratulate the Oyos. Go, Oyos, go! <laughs> Chair recognized Councilman Kern. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, obviously, um, I want to say, um, growing up, I've been to a lot of sporting events in this town. I remember going to the Baltimore Clipper games when he used to play Hershey, their big rival, and then the crowd was so raunchous, and then going to the playoff games and the Clippers and the Bullets, when we played the Knicks, the crowds were always so riled up and all that. And of course, for the Colts and the Ravens playing Pittsburgh, uh, the crowd was always so riled up, but I've never, never been to a sporting event like Friday where the noise level simply was unbearable on the Orioles with the comeback and with the home run in the first or second inning. Um, you can't measure civic pride when you make investments in stadiums and infrastructure to bring in uh, these sports teams. People say we should invest in, in, in sport events, venues, we should invest in our people, but the return on investment, the amount of civic pride that I've seen in this town the last seven to 10 days with the orange, purple's been put to the side for a few days, but the orange and black, the folks wearing their memorabilia, getting the orange towel out there Friday, it's, it's simply something that it makes you glad to be Baltimorean at this time of the year and this time of the lifetime of the Orioles. Uh, so our return on investment and the civic pride in this town is second to none right now. Just where, if you get a chance to go to the game in the next few weeks, so we won't have a council meeting until after the World Series. So obviously this is our last chance to say good luck to the O's, but you better wear some ear protection next time you go to an Oreo game in these playoffs because those decibels are way past what they should be. And the reason the Orioles won that second game Friday, you know, the Orioles got six runs and the other team got six runs, but that seventh run was due to that crowd. That poor left fielder for Detroit could not handle that ball that was hit out there and J.J. Hardy scored that run. Our fan base made that happen in that stadium and our fans as Adam Jones and others will say, it's they're playing for the fans, and they are, and we ought to be very proud of our team. Go Bows. Regular announcements. Regular announcement, Chair recognize Councilwoman Holton. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, yay to the O's. Great pride for Baltimore. But it's also, October is an incredible month for us to remember that it's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I rise to say that it's not just Breast cancer is not just about women, it's about people. And men, men are susceptible to breast cancer just as are women. And so it is important to take time getting tested, getting your mammogram, doing self-breast check exams. They make a difference. Science has advanced so far that with early detection, there's no reason why you cannot live a long and healthy life. The other day on the news, uh, they showed a woman who was walking through a mall and around town in a pink bra, and she had a little camera right there at the center of the bra, and she was gauging how many people were looking at her chest. But the message to it was, <coughs> for all these looking, you look every day, are you checking every day? Are you checking every day? So when you think about how often you know, and for women that oftentimes don't want to look or touch or just know their bodies, this is a time that early detection makes the difference in living. So this month of October, wear some pink, 
NFL teams are wearing pink. Wear some pink. And remember, we all have a mother, a grandmother, sister, aunt, girlfriend, wife, whatever. <clears throat> Take care to stay in the game of life. Thank you. Thank you. I'll check recognize Councilwoman Clark. I already pledged, Councilwoman, I had a grandmother that died from breast cancer, aunt, a um, couple cousins, sister-in-law, so um, I always pledge and walk for cancer, breast cancer and cancer. She ever recognize Councilwoman Clark? And my grandmother, too. Um, I think that our colleague has said it well. Mm -hmm. We've all been touched, and there's something that we can do to fight back, which is help raise the money for the <clears throat> research. Um, Mr. President, members of the council, um, today was the uh, official announcement of the sign-up for the new um, Section 8 voucher list. Um, all of us know that that list has been going on and on and on and on for years. A new list is being formed, and it's very important for people who are eligible for <coughs> housing vouchers by reason of their income to know that there is a very limited time for us to sign up, for people to sign up. And that list is <coughs> going to last for six years. Now, at first, I was very upset because the only way you can sign up is through the internet. But you can use smartphones. So almost everybody knows somebody with a smartphone <coughs> that could help them like sign up, up if you think that you're eligible. So it's, there are four it's categories of people. Families, whatever size. Um, elderly disabled, and then a family of one. In other words, a single person who is not elderly and not in disabled, but who by income can, is eligible. A lot of homeless people are in that category. So here's what to do. Between October 22nd and October 30th, the 22nd to the 30th of October is the only time to sign up. And there, I'm going to hold up this sign. You got to go to a website. Now, can somebody, Fred, can you hold it up for her? Yeah, you know, could you? And it's the bottom of the sign that's important. I don't know where the camera is. And it's www.jointhelist. Dot org. It's www.jointhelist.org. O R G. That's good for it. Thank you for that. Thank you for holding it up. So try to remember that. There'll be lots of flyers and advertisements around, but that's the most important piece of information because you can't, there will be some. Um, centers that open, uh, like around the 28th, 29th, and 30th, in different parts of the city, where you can go and get help, but you still have to sign up online. So what I'm asking, and I hope that people will listen, if you're willing to help people, um, and you're a community organization someplace, or you're a church, let the community know that you will help people sign up for the voucher program. You're going to have to, you don't, you know, just sort of put out the word. <clears throat> if you're a member of this congregation, if you're a member of this neighborhood, um, we will, um, we have smartphones. We, we will help people sign up to register for Section 8. Section 8, everybody, is the voucher program from the federal government that helps people go out and rent housing 
and the federal government pays most of the rent, <coughs> which makes housing affordable for a lot of people who otherwise cannot afford decent housing. It's for families, it's for elderly, it's for disabled, it's for single persons, all of whom have to be economically uh, eligible. And finally, um, basically, there'll be flyers and, and advertisements on TV around, but it's jointhelist.org. I am told that you have to give three pieces of information, your name, your social <laughs> security number, and one other thing, and that the, the application after that is just yes and no. It's a short application, and if you get on, now, if you get signed up, let me, full disclosure, they only are gonna have 25,000 people on the list. So it's gonna be randomly uh, <coughs> decided of the people who sign up, if it's more than 25,000 families or people, then they're gonna randomly choose, the computer's gonna choose who gets to actually be on the list. But let's fight that battle okay. afterwards. First of all, get signed up. Thank you, Mr. President. And one more thing, I want to personally Fred. congratulate Felicia Harris. She is now the first woman of the 14th District, and that because she's just been approved by this council for the Youth Commission, and I expect to put her to work. <clears throat> Chair, recognize Council Vice President Ross Singer. Mr. President, members of the City Council, the next meeting of the City Council will be held on Monday, October 27th at 5 p.m. in the Council Chambers. Thank you. Thank you. There have been no further business. This concludes the 74th meeting of the 71st term of the Baltimore City Council. Thank you and good night. <laughs>